I'm ready. Hello, interwebs. We are back. My name is John Crippo. I'm the Chief Learning Officer here at Q. Uh, we had a couple of fun hiccups this, this evening, but we're getting there. Um, just so anybody that is listening right now, we have uh, the earlier stuff is all pre-recorded and it's in single uh, in a single feed that we can put up um, in probably just about 20 or 30 minutes. So if you were digging what was going on with Tracy and her crew, you'll be able to um, watch that in its entirety with no skipping in a little while. And right now, it is a, such an honor. Um, Brett, I've been a fanboy of yours for easily, <laughs> easily eight years. Um, and, and I just love what you're doing with this idea of building a, a community that's teacher-centric, right? It's educator-centric. It's not, it's not about tools. Um, it's not about um, uh, all these other kind of things. It's about like, teaching and learning and teachers working together, that community. I feel like it parallels a lot what I've done with the, the Rockstar stuff, the Q Rockstar stuff. And uh, then I got to meet you thanks to uh, Kathy Hunt last year. She had me come down to Australia, and we like we just had an instant bromance. So Bang. yeah, so when we were going through the list of people that we thought would be great for um, Spring Q this year, just like attitude wise and and mindset wise, we were like, well, yeah, we got to have Brett. But now, um, with this whole viral issue, and we don't mean the kind that you can use Norton on, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and we are we are uh, plenty good on social distancing right now. Um, I just can't think of a better message than what you're going to share with us over the next few minutes. So I'm going to throw it over to you, Brett, and um, and, and yeah. show us some cool stuff. No worries. I'll go live in a moment. I just want to say uh, thanks so much for inviting me. Uh, and thank you very much, Q, for being super brave. A lot of teachers are going to be trying a, a lot of things uh, that are very new to them. And mm -hmm. uh, you are leading leading the way there, like really picking up the, the mantle and running with it. And uh, I, I think you, as an organization, Q, are living uh, what all the teachers are, are around the globe are, are about to pick up and, and, and yeah. run with at the moment. That, that was just one more thing you just made me remember, which is, like it or not, nearly every teacher on the planet, including professors, they're nearly all uh, remote learning folks now, right? Like remote learning is what the profession is now if you want to be effective. So um, I'm really excited to hear, again, your message of, of hope and inspiration to wrap up our Friday night show here. Uh, well, hope and inspiration, I'll tell you what, I'm going to dovetail at a couple of different angles. Uh, we, we know historically uh, great innovation often comes uh, when there are times of great challenge. And in the world at the moment, uh, we're, we're looking at some pretty serious challenges. So uh, the flip side of that, that, that coin, the, those difficulties that we're experiencing, uh, the, is the fact that there is going to be the ability to, to innovate, the ability to try new things, and the ability to, to really push boundaries that probably haven't really been tested all that much so far. So it's a very exciting time to be an educator. I mean, I say that with all respect because we, we, we know that the situation at the moment, there's a lot of people who are hurting. So uh, as much as we are working to the very best of our ability to uh, innovate and really push these boundaries digitally, and hopefully we will have a little bit of fun and, and, and share a laugh uh, along the way this evening. Uh, I pay my respects and, and, and obviously to the, the gravity of the situation as well. But uh, with every, you know, there's that old Chinese, you know, John, did, you know, the Chinese character for crisis is the same as uh, opportunity. You I love know? that one. I love that one. I love it. There was a, there was a kind of a bad sci-fi show um, uh, called V in the, in, oh, in the early 80s, remember? And I remember the one guy who was like, the leader dude, he said, we must embrace what we, what we fear, right? I remember that one thing from the show, which is kind of like what you're saying, right? Like, if you can eliminate, and I used to tell this to my sixth graders, if you can eliminate things that you're afraid of or worried about, then the things you're afraid of or worried about, that list gets shorter. And so you have to go at them uh, in such a way that you can work on eliminating them. I'm going to actually start my session now. I just want to launch my screen. All righty. Mm -hmm. And... Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So for anyone who is currently looking, if you join us at join.nepod.com, and you can see there's a little code there, you'll, a, you'll be able to actually interact with the presentation that we're going to do. So you'll hear uh, my voice, you'll hear John's voice, uh, but in this session, actually put a few interactive activities 
that are built into the school, uh, in, in, into the set. Um, what's been really good for me, uh, Nearpod is a new tool for, for me to have a, a look at. I was... Uh, yeah, how, many, how many years do you have of using uh, Nearpod, Brett? Uh, 0. 0. 0.00000. <laughs> I'm a few days into Nearpod, and I tell you, it is a very intuitive sort of tool. You mm -hmm. simply drop your slide deck. Everyone's familiar with how to make a slide deck. No matter what your, your, your preference is, and no matter what your platform you normally use, drop your slide deck in, and then there's a whole bunch of easily drop and drag, click, uh, um, interactive sort of tools. So one way that you can really liven up a, a PowerPoint, liven up a, a Google slide or whatever your keynote or whatever your slide deck might be, um, it's a very, very easy way. Uh, I've been very impressed at how uh, user-friendly it has been. So I'm hoping that uh, a few people have joined on. I know we had a few hiccups. We'll see how many people have actually joined the class live. So let's get going. Now, uh, I have switched my set around a little bit today. We were talking there about uh, the need to obviously switch over to from a physical conference in, in Palm Springs to, a, to the virtual co conference here. So I thought it might be timely for us to have a little look at uh, a time in history where there were other challenges uh, and what came out of those periods? Because often, as, I, as we said a few minutes ago, times of great change and times of great challenge are opportunities for great innovation. So we're going to go have a look at the historical um, origins of mobile learning. We'll hopefully learn a few things. I've got three key learning intentions that we're going to get out of this. We're going to learn a little bit of history. We're going to have a little bit of fun. And I'm going to leave you all with some real um, serious practice advice that you might be able to put into your classrooms as well so you'll notice up here in the left hand corner that code to join is going to be uh, visible throughout that whole time so a m o z b i'll say z not b because that's the proper pronunciation um uh, and we'll, we'll get going all right so dum -dum -dum -dum. i'm taking this session straight to defcon one because we are looking at a time now of great change and challenge within society. I'm going to historically look at a time like the Cold War that was also a time of great change and great challenge that drove a lot of innovation. And what a lot of people don't know, that all of the mobile devices, all of the technologies that we use in our classrooms, all of the laptops, everything that is the components or all the components of these pieces all have their origin in the cold war innovations that came out of the cold war so i'm going to trace that hopefully we're going to learn a few new things let's have a look boom boom cold war technology is in our classrooms we know that reagan called to tear down the wall berlin wall uh in the 80s so i suppose uh john's core my core our core today is how can we tear down the wall uh, of our classrooms. How can we tear down the wall that has prevented our students from being able to operate online, uh, to be able to really reach beyond the boundaries of their classroom, of their city, of their state, even of their country, and open up those boundaries even within the mind of their understanding. So let's have a little look at how we might be able to do that. The first task, this is where I'm going to find out uh, very quickly here how many people we actually do have live and uh, being interactive. When I was in grade six uh, of, of my school, my, my schooling, so late 80s for me, uh, I remember having a very clearly, I remember having a, a lesson on uh, government and civics and learning popular opinion and how polls drive what politicians go. And the teacher put up a little poll, we were gonna learn how to make a graph. And I remember very specifically the answer to what was the list of our concerns. I've made a poll here in Nearpod, and the people who are playing along would really like you to answer this poll. So I'm going to start the poll now. I've got a few seconds here to chime in, and you're going to have a few different options. Uh, you've got option uh, A, B, C, D. We've got nuclear war. We've got the greenhouse effect. Obviously, climate change is the, the modern incarnation, the, the terminology there. A greenhouse effect was the, was the term back then. Traffic always a big issue. The Exxon Valdez, late 80s, that was around about that time. Too much homework, 
students always stressed about uh, how much homework they have and then obviously if you're not really sure you haven't got an answer there what do you think was the top of the list of concerns in my grade six class in the late 80s when we were learning about civics when we were learning about opinion polls i'm going to click share here and have a look do, do, do. at what let me go uh have a look at what the correct answer was and i'm just having a little bit of a hiccup and Brett, just a couple of fun uh, trivia facts yeah. for you. I actually got to shake Reagan's hand in 1976. I remember it's super soft. It reminded me of my grandpa's hand. It was like super crazy soft. And then uh, when I was a junior in high school, I uh, actually did a pretty cool uh, greenhouse effect report in, uh, oh gosh, that was 1980. And uh, my teacher didn't give me a good grade because I didn't follow the format. And I want really? you to think about this. I'm doing greenhouse effect in 1980, and my teacher says, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have uh, the right format. I was ahead of my time on that. Boundaries, John. Instead of going, dude, you're thinking ahead, he's like, no. <laughs> Wrong format. And I guess that's, the, I guess that's what this, this little talk is about, is that how do we tear down those walls? How do we tear down those boundaries? I'm going to move on because the correct answer was worried about that nuclear war, worried about nuclear annihilation. I remember being scared of uh, what might happen if there happened to be an, a, a nuclear war. And that's coming from a, a country that doesn't even have any nuclear weapons. We don't have nuclear facilities here, but there was that pervasive sort of fear. Um, now, it was something that was very challenging. Like, uh, it's very deep, it's very ominous, very bleak. So how do we as a society often cope when we have these really uh, challenging, bleak, difficult things? Often we turn to comedy. And you can see at the moment now with a lot of the rise of different uh, memes and, and, and different things that are happening. We've seen quite a few little funny things with Corona beers at the moment. Yeah. Um, now, we often turn, that's our human nature. We, we make comedy out of something that's challenged as a coping mechanism. So one thing that that creates is a hell of a lot of great TV. A hell of a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Right here. How good, how good. Uh, was, it, was it 007 movies, still love them now. Daniel Craig today, Roger Moore, Sean Connery, um, George Lazenby, right at the beginning there. Gotta love George. So my next interactive activity for everybody who is playing along at home is who is your favorite bond who was your favorite bond so what we need to do now is if you are playing along uh, i'd like you to answer who your favorite uh bond was and i've got a feeling the way that this is set up because of a few hiccups we don't have too many people playing along at the moment uh, no matter how large your class is, you can usually uh, cope with a pretty good class size. And you've got down here, you can hide students' names if you're sharing things with, with various students. Now, one of my favorite lines, John, did you have a favorite line? One of the. the, the well, um, I'm, a, um, I'm a purist. So I, I, Roger Moore to me is the a quintessential bond, but I think Daniel Craig is doing a wonderful job. He's doing a bang up job. He's doing a like yourself, I have a, a minor uh, man crush on him. So uh, <laughs> let's move on because that's getting awkward for me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> now, tell you what, do you know what? I, I, one of my favorite lines was uh, Sean Connery, Thunderball, picks up a, a spear gun and shoots one of the villains mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the spear and he says, I think he got the point. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> As an English teacher, the bad puns are everything, right? The bad puns, the bad whole puns thing. Are everything. The whole look thing. Look at this beautiful segue because my point of this, the point of that I want to make in this session here is that the Cold War technology has infiltrated our classrooms. How do we tear down that wall? I'm going to keep coming back to that. Let's look at what has happened. So, big challenge here. What if slick marketing has whitewashed history so much? that we use Cold War military-grade weapon technology in our classrooms every day. Didn't even know don't, it. Don't even know it. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Cold War has entered our classroom, and we were the people who deployed the devices. We deployed this weapon-grade technology uh, in our classroom to help our students learn. Very, very powerful technology. 
So the microchip, for example, a lot of people ha think, how, did, how was the microchip uh, created? Thinking Silicon Valley at the back of a, um, at the back of a garage, we've got a, a young Steve Jobs and, and Wozniak in the image there. I tell you now, actually, when computers were the size of rooms, they needed to shrink them down during the Cold War so we could have a microchip that was small enough fit on the top of an intercontinental ballistic missile just so that missile could be more accurate with its target. That's what drove the development of the microchip. Digital cameras. The invention of digital cameras solved the problem for spy satellites. When we invented satellites that started flying over various targets to take uh, images, we couldn't really use film cameras. How are you going to get the fil film down from outer space? Right. You're not they had the solution. There's another innovation coming out here. So we take the, take the image. They had to work a, a way to electronically send that image back down to a receiving station mm -hmm. here on Earth. You think of how many times we use digital cameras to, to create uh, work portfolios for our students. Spy satellite technology. Our GPS system. Oh, the Pokemon yeah. Go game. Pokemon Go game runs on runs on on GPS. We use our Google Maps when we're driving around with our GPS. In class, as VR and AR becomes more mainstream with what we're doing, so so much of that is reliant on GPS and geolocation. So that when you are in a certain spot, it will trigger different reactions to the virtual experience that you're that you're having. GPS was developed by the U.S. Navy to guide cruise missiles mm. and help cruise missiles be more accurate. In the first, Wait, World you're War, saying, Brett, that it was not so that I could get to the mall and buy the Starbucks right away. That's not why they made GPS. That's not it. You're redir redirecting you. Five hundred meters, turn right, <laughs> and then blow up. About three hundred feet. I'm not sure. All right. So the internet. Mm -hmm. You think of cloud-based learning. How much do we do online? The working remotely, digital has been the savior of this situation at the moment. DARPA were the ones who developed the internet uh, right in Los Alamos, just so they could exchange nuclear uh, mm -hmm. nuclear technology with other research facilities around around the states. So we are talking about some real proper hard-hitting weapon-grade technology that really is driving the devices that we walk around with our pockets, the laptops that we use, the tools that we have put in the hands of our students. These are powerful tools back from the 60s and 70s. We're giving them to our students and we can get big things from them because of that. So here's my real controversial statement. Should we use the word ha uh, war tech, hashtag war tech, war tech, be used alongside ed tech? The origin of them uh, coincides. I'll leave that one. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But I want to do something a little bit lighter. So at the fall of the Berlin Wall, at the ending of uh, the, the Cold War, so much joy, so much uh, vision and hope for the future sprang forth. And that's potentially what we, we might be able to get out of the situation now. I want to have a look here, John. Can you can you recognize that the words there? Do you recognize what song that comes from? I believe that that song is "Winds of Change" by the Scorpions. Just a guess, Winds Brett. Just a guess. Change. Winds of Change by the Scorpions. Take me to the magic of the moment on the glory night where the children of tomorrow share their share dreams. dreams. Yeah. You, and me. you know what? I look at that as an educator, and I'm thinking. The magic of remote learning, the magic of online experiences, sharing those Google Docs, sharing those digital creations with you and me as teachers, collaborating online. Mm -hmm. So much of that I see as the potential for what we're able to do. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm a man who loves a little bit, a little bit of karaoke. I don't know about you, John. Uh, one of the things you don't want to hear me do is sing, Brett, but I will do this for you. You'll do this for me? Yeah, I will do whistle. this for you. We saw that's the, the beginning part. Okay, take there it. There you go. I tell you what, I've got a little bit of music that I'm going to play. We'll see if we can join in. I'm going to go straight to or almost up to the uh, 
almost up to the chorus. Brothers, like you and me. It's like us, tech right. brothers. I need a lighter or something, right? Oh. I'm doing it. Here we go. You ready with me? Take, Take me. Me. To the magic of the moment on a glory night. Hey, where'd the music go? This is ugly. Where the children Where of tomorrow the children share their dreams the with Brett and me. Brett See how I localized me. it? That's so cool when Van Halen does that. Uh, all right, hold on. <laughs> i tell you what, might be time to uh, save everyone's ears and move along to the next slide. So I've got a question now. Uh, Reagan... The man with the soft hands that that John once shook, like uh, like kids kids skin gloves, crazy soft. Really, yeah. Really. Um, he had this challenge. He he challenged uh, Mr. Gorbachev tear down those walls. Right now, we are faced with that challenge to tear down the walls that w have really bound us a as educators for uh, for for decades. Uh, we've got this technology now that we can actually free our students. There are a lot of lessons that, and metaphors. I'm a primary school teacher by trade, so I love a story. There are a lot of metaphors that we can take out of the Cold War mm -hmm. and put in this also challenging historical time right now. So I want to ask if mobile technology has been redefined, uh, rede has totally redefined the possibilities of education. Students can now do things that were previously impossible. We've got the chance to flip the narrative with this situation at the moment and really take the, the bull by the horns and do some amazingly powerful things. But I want to ask you, who can we get inspiration from, uh, from the Cold War? Who is really that, that, that metaphorical archetype figure? Who was the hero of the Cold War? John, do you have an idea? Rambo. Rambo, Rambo. was it Rambo? No. Rambo. I'm not going to go Rambo. I'm Sylvester Stallone's going to get a pass on this one. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Norris. Chuck Norris. Uh, I've got an activity here. Uh, <laughs> who was the real? Got a lot of uh, got a lot of students there. I'll hold your name there. It's go me ahead. and Cindy going head to head. <laughs> <laughs> you, me, Cindy. See who can get it correct. Uh, who was the real hero of the Cold War? Mine's in. Yours, yours is in, Cindy. In. I'm going to share my answer here. We've got one done. You could predict Half who mine's going to be. Like, you, you, I already told you my answer. Oh, there you go, there you go. Let's <laughs> have a look. See the answers there? We've got half of you got it incorrect. Half of you got it correct. That would be because the hero of the Cold War, I'm telling you now, David Hasselhoff. Well, I don't. I, I. You're going to have to fill me in on this, Brett. How is Brett? Uh, how is David Hasselhoff the hero of the beach, the hero of the Cold War? Yeah, I'll tell you now. On the day that the Berlin Wall was torn down, David Hasselhoff happened to be touring in Germany with his with his rock band. He got the message very early on of what was happening. He stood on top of the Berlin Wall singing songs of freedom as they actually tore down the Berlin Wall. Well, I don't know if you were singing the Scorpions. Oh, he wasn't singing the Scorpions? He didn't have <laughs> no, the rights? <laughs> but what an iconic image, uh, an iconic person from that time period. And I'm going to show you why I believe that the Hoff is a person that teachers can learn from at the moment. Uh, we can all be more Hoff. We need to be more like the Hoff in this situation to be effective educators and i've got three reasons why first one let's have an example deep learning do you remember knight rider kit that, kit the car. hello david yeah i love it love it had information at his fingertips a uh, computer that he could talk to a car that could obviously drive but a lot of research a lot of information he had to use that information, mm -hmm. for those of you who are too young to know, he had to use that information, synthesize that information, and make, uh, create results, work out what was really happening, evaluate the information he had, and then come up with uh, 
with solutions. You just ma like you just made me realize that Knight Rider is the opposite of Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> the opposite. It's like a Venn diagram. Over here, I'm just gonna go for it. I have no technology, right? I got nothing. I'm just gonna floor it, and uh, we're gonna jump, Brett. And then over here, I have Knight Rider, and it's like it's a Google car, right? Like. If you've watched the show, he's constantly saying, Kit, how long until I get here? Kit, what's that guy's real name? It's not just a car. Not just a car. And process that information to make informed decisions. And that's really what we want our students to do. We don't want our students just to be able to be parrots and recall content and not really have a deep understanding of it. We want students to be able to take that knowledge, synthesize that knowledge, and then pass that on and, and, and into different situations. My point number two, empathy. Mm -hmm. No other more iconic time could I think of it, of Baywatch as a symbol of, of empathy. Because you know, John, some people stand in the shadows, afraid to step into the light. But some <laughs> people... <laughs> yes. I saw what no, you're doing there. Those are the Baywatch lyrics, right? So I see, I see, I, I see what you did. That was smooth, yeah. Because that picture of Hoff, the first thing that comes to mind for most any uh, adult person is empathy, right? When I see that, I'm thinking, this guy cares about me. He wants to reach out. He wants to share his little plastic rescue thing with me. Yeah, that's it. But he's using his skills to rescue and service other people. That was the message of Baywatch, right? Yep. Other person-centered, be other person-centered. Uh, with this knowledge that we're giving our students, uh, even if you take something as, as, as tremendous, tremendously um, evocative and, and deep and a bit scary like the virus that we're looking at now, if we just break it down to facts and figures and content, we can make graphs that are exponential graphs. We can look at data. If we just look at raw numbers, but we don't teach students to have that compassion and that empathy, uh, look, like, are we really making a difference for the world? Really, you're just those sheriffs that are always fighting with the lifeguards at that point, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. But, like, it is a time for, I wouldn't be surprised that there'd be students now who would be inspired to grow up to be virologists, people who are going to look now more seriously mm -hmm. at going into the medical field, people who will do that not because of the drama that is around, but because they, they, they're, they're moved and they're compassionate and they want to help other people. Yep. If we can just be, we, we know that when any learning design thinking sort of challenge, being able to understand and empathize with the end user makes your creation better as a result. So if we can enhance empathy through this process of, of, mm -hmm. of learning, then I think we become better teachers because of it. Love but it. One, Third and final example of why the hop. He's getting less clothes in each picture, so I can't wait for picture three. There's a little, it's a little less clothing in each shot. <laughs> He's very well dressed in the next one. Oh, good. Okay. okay, okay, you're scaring me. What I'm wearing. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, there we go. And creating thinking. Could and then you... he refreshes his career. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> Can you think of a, a situation that is more unpredictable than Sharknado? Literally no situation is less predictable than Literally. Sharknado. Literally none. So when we ask our students to be able to take their knowledge and think creatively. And well, really maybe our broadcast tonight. It, this has been pretty unpredictable, but it's not even Sharknado. I really hope someone's tuning in right now. I'm just going to see what they're talking about on, on, on this spring queue uh, virtual. Why are they talking about Sharknado, Hasselhoff, no. and creating? They weren't before. Habitat. They were not before. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go. So, look, my learning intention was to talk a little bit about the history of, of uh, mobile devices. We looked at that. We had a little bit of a giggle and a little bit of a metaphor in the middle with our David Hasselhoff. And I want to go through. And we're going to get three tips now. So, we're going to jump through. Three our tips. students have. Our students have extremely powerful tools at their fingertips. So let's show them how to use this wisely. Our first one was our deep learning activity, right? So we had our deep learning uh, challenge. For me, one of the tools that I really like, one of the techniques, one of the pedagogies that I really like that facilitates 
uh, deep learning is the, this, this technique are called a digital escape room. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've actually made a little video and I've got the link up the top, salakas.me slash remote learning. So you can go and have a look at a how-to video and in, in your own time that, uh, that you might like to uh, see exactly how to do that. But let me explain what it is. A lot of, your, a lot of the, the Q uh, PLN here are probably going to famil be familiar with escape rooms or breakout EDU. This is really the, a digital incarnation of mm -hmm. that. And I want to give a big shout out to um, Andrea Tolia, a, a fantastic educator in Tennessee, who about two years ago when I came up with this idea really helped me uh, be able to nut out the, the way to be able to do this. But it's perfect for a remote learning setting mm -hmm. because you can have, uh, it is device agnostic and, and platform agnostic. It doesn't really matter what, what platform you use. But if you had uh, a series of five or six or seven lessons and you've got them sitting up there and you've got them in, in, in different pages uh, and you have those lessons explicitly explained so the students know exactly mm -hmm. what they need to do. Uh, you have a landing page. It's got your, your learning intentions so the students know what it is that they're about to achieve. And then uh, each section is password protected. Mm -hmm. So they log on to the, the first section to start. There's a challenge they have to do, a task that they have to do to build their field, to build their knowledge for whatever the topic is that you're doing. I've used this to teach space. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, and if I could jump in, Brett, like uh, we do yeah. a lot of stuff with edge of protocols, right? And, and what I've realized is that uh, when you make every lesson a scavenger hunt, student interest skyrockets. So all you're saying is, Go look at these web pages so that you can tell me the answers, which is kind of what we want them to do right now, but I don't have to go through the lecture phase. Am I pretty close with that? Pretty close. That's how I'd start it up. Yeah. You'd have the information there, and you can actually make them work through. And once they get the key bit of information or watch this video, what was that key word? What was that key message? And maybe that word unlocks the next activity, yeah. unlocks the next activity. So you can have it set up so that maybe they unlock, um, say, four or five activities. Mm -hmm. So this letting lets students work at their own pace yep. as well, which is also a very powerful uh, situation. In and they can, they can also, in these times, they can collaborate without being in the same room, right? They're still working together. They don't have to sit at the same table to collaborate. Exactly right. And as a teacher, I can also even keep um, moderate control and, and quality control of the work because what I might do is that one of those situations, maybe about halfway through the escape room, I've got it that you have to send me in a, a digital example of what you're working on, a, mm -hmm. a, 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 some sort of video, a, a digital artifact, mm -hmm. and then I can quality control it. If I'm happy with it, I can send you the password that unlocks the next section. If I don't think you've cut the mustard, I don't think you've put enough legwork in here, I send that back to you. You're not getting onto the next task until you do that first part properly. So we've got quality control with deep learning Yep. Quality learning, feedback, and the yeah, and they're, uh, they're getting instant feedback along with the progress, and look, and it's paced in a way that is comfortable for everybody. Great teacher, and student. all yeah, right, that's beautiful. That's my, that's now, my, and I don't know, I I don't want to I don't want to give this away if it's not true, but I believe I saw on the internet this week that all the digital breakout edu lessons are free right now. So, I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm saying. Have a look. Have a look see. Is that how we would say it in Australia? Have a look see. Uh, have a look see. Have maybe I just made that up. I don't know. Maybe this. Have a captain cool. That's <laughs> rhyming slang for have a look. Have a captain. Have, have a so so uh, breakout edu shout out to Adam Bello, um, James Sanders, um, Mark Hammonds, great folks over there at breakout. And but my understanding is that there you can get these for free right now. So you can literally um, crank that up and start using them. Someone hit Adam Bello on DM right now. Someone tweet Alan Bello. Yeah, Alan Bello. yeah let's find out. Let's see if he can respond to us before we finish here. Now, um, the next activity here, whoop, I just, aha, took a little while to load. Okay, next activity here, I, I had set up as a, as a collaborative board. I might just explain this rather than jump into it um, because what we can do with the deep learning pedagogy is we can actually have a situation in Nepod like this where I can have a whole bunch of people um, posting different things. So I can put out a, a, a brainstorm activity, which is what we were going to do here. 
I might move along because we've had a few hiccups with um, live stream and I've, I've got a funny feeling I've been talking and having a little bit too much fun singing karaoke with you. <laughs> that could have so, driven off a few of the watchers as well. The karaoke <laughs> probably did not help. That's it. So I'm going to move on here, but we can put these sorts of activities uh, in, with our, in with our work as well that allows for that online collaboration. Um, empathy was our second task. So how can I really put people... Uh, in a situation that where they can see, you know, walk a mile in another man's shoes, that old metaphor. One of the, the, the um, activities that I like... Love this. Fake messages. Uh, put yourself in someone else's shoes. You can do this with a lot of uh, uh, different ages. So I've got down here, There are, you can get um, fake messages in... There's, there's a million different uh, websites yeah. that you can go to. There's hundreds it's of these, got, so don't ask Brett which is the right one. You just can... Google the phrase no right. fake there texting no right. device and you're good. That's it. That's it. Uh, I've got here, BB Wolf, Big Bad Wolf, Little Pig, Little Pig, let me in. No, you ain't my brother. So you can actually <laughs> really be creative right. and put themselves in, in another person's perspective. Well, and that's actually, that's more than just empathy. You're actually getting English taught because you're considering the audience. You're doing point of view. It's highly engaging. They're writing their answers, not just being popsicle sticked to de decide who's got the right answer. Every kid will want to do this. That's right. That's right. I've got a little activity here or a challenge that I want to throw out to everybody who watches this. Whether you are watching this live or you watch the uh, recorded version of this, I've got a link here, faketweeter.com. Uh, if you see this session, I want you to make sure you use the hashtag uh, for, for we are Q, hashtag we are Q or hashtag spring Q. Uh, or, John, if you can redirect any other particular hashtag you want people using. Those are great. Um, those are great ones. Good, good choices. Yeah. Uh, what I'd love to see here is I'd love to jump on the Twitter stream and see a few people create a fake tweet from the Hoff. From the Hoff. So you can actually jump on and pick who you want the, the tweet to be from. Uh, write a message. How many likes you think that tweet would have got. How many, how many retweets? Put, you can even have different people, different characters replying. So I'm looking forward to jumping on the, the, the Twitter stream and just seeing exactly how creative we can come up with. Oh, I'm busting uh, one out right now. You're busting one right, right Mine's going to be verified too because I don't do, just do those yeah. homemade tweets. That's right. So there is even a, a fake verification there. So I could imagine... You could pick, uh, imagine uh, being an English teacher and in setting a task here where students can create a, a whole bunch of fake tweets or fake Instagram posts or fake whatever you want uh, as the main character, as the protagonist in Hamlet or, or something in a, a literacy sort of um, uh, uh, context, uh, really be able to put themselves uh, and understand and see the perspective of another person. Uh, John looks like he's having a lot of fun there. I'm busting this I'm thing out. I got a good one for you. <laughs> I'm going to jump now to my to my uh, example for being creative and, and and showing critical thinking. And really, that's the that's um, the we, we we talk a lot about having a real world context, actually giving students uh, something that relates to the real world, and building up a series of digital artifacts that demonstrate that learning. So if we want students to be creative, to respond to a different situation, put that big challenge out, let them become experts in that field, let them create an entire suite of different artifacts that demonstrate their learning and their understanding of that problem. And they can send that back to you. And this is a project that could probably go for an awfully long time. So again, if I think, think back to when I've had students studying space, um, what we might be able to do is, is have, uh, let, let's learn about space and you, maybe you've got to write an information report, maybe you've got to create a video, but maybe you've also got to put in a poem uh, about space. And then maybe even pick one aspect of this big subject area and you become the expert on that and you make at least three or four, depending on how long you want the task to go for, three or four digital responses package that up into one big proper dossier and then send that off. You've got real world context, real world issues, 
and a whole big suite of digital artifacts that are examples of student learning. Here's my fake tweet. A great lifeguard leader starts with empathy and uses the search feature in his trans -head. Look how many <laughs> likes, man. He's banging. They're super popular. <laughs> super popular. One million likes. I'll tell you what. We are pumping on the uh, on the Twitter feed. All right, thank you, Hop, for um, sharing that. Look, that actually brings me towards uh, the ending here. I did want to demonstrate, if you are using Neat5, there's a great uh, ability here where we can actually have students even draw and articulate uh, their, their favorite example. So if you're playing along live, uh, I might get you to, to have a little bit of a draw um, I've got, I'm feeling a little bit bad um, that I may have spoken uh, too long. I can see here that some of my students, Hoff Rocks, I can see that some of my students are uh, uh, drawing, submitted. I can get a copy of that. I think it's very, very powerful sort of tool um, for you to be able to summarize learning in a, in a quick way. One of those quick uh, sort of brain checks before um, yeah, exit, exit a session. Oh, give me just there another you. second, Brett. I'm going to bring you some gold. Oh, bring the heat, John, bring the heat. Oh, I need to move it in my Google folder. I don't have time. <laughs> I was going to send you the Knight Rider car doing a, a Dukes of Hazard jump and cross over the genres. There you go. You mix the genres. Don't cross the streams. <laughs> yeah, and I love this. I love this draw tool because you can find out what every kid thinks right away. I, I remember, I don't know if you've ever seen this quote of, or if you know Sam Patterson, at Sam Patui, but... He, he had the best one, one item blog I've ever seen and basically it said, uh, don't raise your hand, I'm calling on everybody. And with that drawing tool and using a tool like Nearpod, I can truly call on everybody because I'm not gonna get a stack of papers four minutes from now, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what they're thinking and feeling right now and, and pivot and, and turn to that. And that's, that's the ed tech of the year, war materials ed tech piece gives us the ability to, to work with kids that way. That's it, that's it, look. And that's the conclusion of my session. I hopefully I've delivered on what I promised. I wanted to show you three things. I wanted to give you a little bit of a historical reference, uh, and hopefully people who have been watching have learned a, a few things about the origin of the tools that we walk around with. So we, we, we've gone around with some takeaways. Uh, I promised that uh, I'm, I'm a storyteller. We had a little funny little metaphor there in the middle, and then hopefully you walk away with a few practical ideas on uh, the potential that you could use uh, to increase deep learning, increase empathy, and then increase uh, creative and critical thinking within your classroom in this current environment. Thank you so much, Brett. This is how, uh, this is how we clap the, the, at the School of the Deaf, because clapping doesn't help if you can't hear it. So I'm doing this for you right now. Thanks for hanging out with us, yeah. and have a great rest of the day. I appreciate you as a as a cool cat and a and a worldwide educator and I'm hoping other people can follow you. Your Twitter handle is is a very creative. Uh, my name is Brett Salakas so. and very creative at Mr. Salakas, M R Salakas. <laughs> uh, I think I had you beat with Hoff at Hoff, even more creative. <laughs> and then if people want to see what's going on in Australia, what's a great hashtag or two to follow? Well, do you know what? Hashtag Aussie Ed is the place to be. That's One stop shop. Bet. All the people are there. I've got a fantastic team. I've, I've got a quick shout out to um, awesome educators like Rob McTaggart and Zena Chalich and a whole bunch of the team uh, who run Aussie Ed. So, so uh, there's a lot of things happening uh, in Australia and we've got next door in New Zealand. If I tell you now, if you want to know what is happening uh, in global trends in education, you keep your eyes on Australia, you keep your eyes on New Zealand. It's a place like New Zealand, they are small, but they punch hugely mm -hmm. above their weight. When they, you know, if you're setting up a company, if you're setting up an idea in New Zealand, you've got to think scale instantly. Uh, so they are big thinkers and big movers and shakers in the world. I think Australia, we certainly hold our own. We've got that Anzac tradition, that Anzac Brotherhood, ANZ, mm -hmm. Australia and New Zealand. We're combined, combined, we stand shoulder to shoulder. And I am proud to stand here shoulder to shoulder with you too, my brother. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me on. And, and then hopefully I get to see you. Uh, in real life sometime soon hopefully in about 364 days brett um so uh 
Thanks very much for jumping in with us tonight. Um, we're gonna do a hard upload of all these videos later. So if they, if they skip for anybody, um, we'll send the complete link up for everybody. They can watch the entirety. It's a really, really uh, great way and time when there's no live sports. Uh, there's only uh, the recorded things out there happening on sports. There's a lot of free time and almost all of our teachers are at home. So what a great time to just enjoy their career without worrying about end of the year tests, without worrying about summer break being too close or too far. They can really just think about teaching right now. It's a, it's a wonderful time. So thanks a lot, Brett. And that'll close us out for this evening. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow on Facebook Live. Uh, via Zoom sessions. We have three going tomorrow and uh, we'll crank those up at about one o'clock. We're super excited to keep sharing and we're not stopping. We're going to keep on oversharing. On behalf of Q, thank you to the Ayers family and Allegretto Vineyard and Resort in Paso Robles, California. As we pivoted from our spring Q event in Palm Springs, Doug Ayers and his team provided immediate support to bring virtual spring queue and online learning professional development to you. Cheers.